Lesson 121 has several parts. The first part is on convergence and divergence. Then we'll look at series indexing and arithmetic of series. Let's start with part A and some series such as geometric and telescoping which we learned about in lesson 117 those converge and their exact sums can be determined. That's not the case for most series. Now here's a theorem for checking whether a series diverges. It says if a sub n, if that series from n equals 1 to infinity converges, then the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals 0. It would be better if we knew what happened with the limit. Because usually that's what we do. We find a limit and then we can tell if it converges or diverges. So what we should do is take the contrapositive of this statement and we can just say if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0 then that series from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n diverges Remember you learned about contrapositives and converse and inverse way back in lesson 3. This statement is much more helpful because now we can say that if the limit as a sub n or as n approaches infinity of that value a sub n, if that's not equal to 0, then we know that it diverges. Another way to think about what we're saying is if the terms, if each of the little bits, basically, the discrete parts are the terms in that series. If they do not tend to zero as n goes to infinity, then the series must diverge. The sum of all of those terms must diverge. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems. Determine if this series converges or diverges. Well, let's take the limit. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is 1 over n in this case, if that is not equal to 0, then it diverges. However, this one is equal to 0. So that doesn't mean it converges, though. That's an important thing to understand here. All we know is if the limit doesn't equal 0, it diverges. So we don't know what happens when it does equal 0. We haven't learned that yet. So we just need to say inconclusive right now. Look at this series and practice problem B. Determine if that converges or diverges. Well, let's go ahead and find the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n minus 4 over 4n. On a limit like that, a good first step is to divide above and below by n. And so we'd end up with 3 minus 4 over n over 4. As n approaches infinity, this value here goes to 0. And so we end up with 3 over 4. Our theorem tells us if that limit is not equal to 0, then it diverges. So this series diverges. So this is the divergence theorem. That's what it's known as. So remember that one. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0, then that series diverges. Let's go into part B of this lesson on series indexing. And what is an index? What are we talking about? Well, an index is a set of values in the domain of a sequence. It's basically what the values for n are. Sometimes it might be convenient to rewrite a series with a different index, with a different domain for that sequence. Look at this practice problem. I want you to rewrite that series beginning with n equals negative 3. Now, usually what happens on here is that the formula for a sub n, that'll change. So what we should do first on this is just go ahead and rewrite out a few terms of that series. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Starting with 1, we would have 2 over 2 basically, or 1. And then I'll just put plus signs here since it's a series. 3 over 4, plus 4 over 8, plus 5 over 6, plus 6 over 32. That should be enough. Now that is our series. We don't want to change our series. We want to keep it the same. We're just changing the index. So we have n equals minus 3 to infinity now. Now think about it. How do we get the first term to be 1 or, well, it was originally 2 over 2. How could we do that? Well, we have n plus 1 right now, but we would need an n which is negative 3 plus a 5 to get a 2 in the numerator. And then think about the denominator. We have 2 to the n right now. We need it to be 2 to the power of 1. So we would just say 2 to the n plus 4. So that gives us 2 over 2 or 1 for our first term. And then our second one should be 3 over 4. If we had negative 2 plus 5, that would be 3 over 2 to the negative 2 plus 2, or 2 squared is 4. And then the third term should be negative 1 plus 5, or 4, over 2 to the third, which is 8. And so we did do that correctly. Let's go ahead and put a box around that. We changed the index to n equals negative 3 that changed a n. So if you have another problem like this, the best thing to do is just to go ahead and rewrite the series out term by term. Just pick several terms and then rewrite the new value for a sub n and the index, keeping in mind the, the change in the index. But you still have to have the same terms. Otherwise, you don't have the same series anymore. Let's go on to part C now and learn a little bit more about series, learn about some arithmetic of series. Let's start out looking at addition and subtraction of series. And if you had a, a sum A sub N and a sum B sub N, if they both converged and that A sub N, it converged to A, B sub N converged to B, then a couple of things you could learn from that are that the sum from N equals 1 to infinity of a sub n plus b sub n, that's just going to equal a plus b. And then also, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n minus b sub n, that's equal to a minus b. Now something else about these is that if just one diverges, then a sub n plus b sub n and a sub n minus b sub n diverge, both diverge. So we're talking about the series there. I didn't write all the summation symbology down. But if just one of those series diverges, then the sum of the two or the difference of the two, both of those diverge. Now, if both diverge, they could actually converge if they like canceled each other out. Other tests are necessary to determine convergence and divergence. So just keep that in mind. Now let's look at some multiple rules for series. Look at this first one here. If a sub n converges to a and c is constant, then that series of c a n is equal to c times the sum a n, which is equal to c times a. And then it diverges. If a sub n diverges and c is a non-zero constant, 
then that series from n equals 1 to infinity for c times a sub n, that diverges also. Now the last one is, is like number three except, or like number two, except when c equals zero. Then the series is equal to zero. And I mean, these are kind of simple to think about. Pretty obvious statements about multiplying series by a constant. Let's go ahead and do a practice problem now. Let's find the sum of this series. Now when it says find the sum of, that should key us that we can break this series into two parts and add them together. And we can do that. We have the sum of 5 over 5 to the n minus the sum of 3 to the n over 5 to the n. Now those look kind of like geometric series. Let's just go ahead and find a few terms in each one first. 5 over 5 would be 1, and then 5 over 5 squared would be 1 fifth. 5 over 5 cubed would be 1 25th. And then look at the other series. 3 over 5 would be our first term. Then 9 over 25. Then 27 over 125. We should be able to see that the sum on the left, or the series on the left, has a equal to 1, r equal to 1 fifth, and the series on the right has a equal to 3 fifths, r equal to 3 fifths. So these are two geometric series. They should both converge because r is less than 1. And so we can just use our relationship s is equal to a over 1 minus r to find that convergent sum. So for the series on the left, we'll just have 1 over 1 minus 1 fifth, or 5 fifths minus 1 fifth is 4 fifths. So that converges to 5 over 4. On the right, we would have 3 fifths over 1 minus 3 fifths would just be 2 fifths, which converges to 3 halves. All we have left to do now is subtract the 2. 5 over 4 minus 3 over 2, which would just be the same thing as 6 over 4, equals a negative 1 over 4. So we've continued on in this lesson with our analysis of the infinite, looking at the arithmetic of series, learning that if the limit of a sub n does not equal 0, then it must diverge. The analysis of the infinite was studied heavily in the 18th century and used to understand calculus. We also use it to help us understand calculus, but series are important in computer programming as well and in understanding how computers work. Okay, well that's all for lesson 121.